Imagine a fighter jet, now imagine it hovering like a helicopter, blasting off vertically from a runway, or even a ship's deck. That was the Yak-141, a Soviet marvel that took its first vertical landing in 1991. This wasn't just any other jet, this was a VTOL aircraft vertical takeoff and landing. The Yak-141 promised to revolutionize naval aviation, offering a glimpse into a future of incredible air power. The Yak-141, also known by its NATO reporting name Freestyle, represented a new breed of combat aircraft. It was the culmination of decades of Soviet research and development into vertical takeoff and landing technology. The world had never seen a supersonic VTOL jet before the Yak-141. The jet was designed to be a formidable opponent, capable of challenging the West's best aircraft. However, its story is not just one of technological prowess. It is also a story of ambition, setbacks, and ultimately, unfulfilled potential. The Yak-141, despite its promise, ultimately fell victim to the tumultuous political and economic landscape of the late Cold War. The Soviet Union's collapse brought an abrupt end to the project leaving the world to wonder what might have been. To understand the Yak-141, we need to understand the Soviet Navy's situation. Unlike the powerful U.S. Navy with its massive aircraft carriers, the Soviet fleet relied on smaller ships. These ships couldn't launch large, traditional aircraft. The Soviets needed a different solution. They needed jets that could operate from these smaller vessels, jets that could take off and land vertically. This need spurred the development of VTOL aircraft in the Soviet Union. The Soviets envisioned a fleet equipped with VTOL fighters. These jets could defend their ships and launch attacks without needing extensive runways. This capability was crucial for a navy operating in the confined waters of the North Atlantic and the Black Sea. The Soviet military leaders saw VTOL aircraft as a way to level the playing field with the United States. They believed that by deploying large numbers of VTOL fighters, they could counter the U.S. Navy's advantage in carrier-based aircraft. Before the Yak-141, there was the Yak-38. This earlier VTOL jet, while groundbreaking, had limitations. It was slow, had a limited range, and could only carry a small payload. The Yak-38, however, provided valuable lessons. It proved that the Soviets could indeed design and build a working VTOL jet. The experiences and data gathered from the Yak-38 program were crucial in shaping the development of its successor, the Yak-141. The Yak-141 was designed to overcome those limitations. It was to be faster, more maneuverable, and capable of carrying a more substantial weapons load. It aimed to be a true multi-role combat aircraft. The Yakovlev Design Bureau, known for its innovative aircraft designs, was tasked with creating this next-generation VTOL jet. They faced a daunting challenge, to push the boundaries of aerospace engineering and create a jet that could outperform anything the West had. Section 4, A Design Challenge. Designing a VTOL jet is incredibly complex. Imagine trying to make a jet engine that can point down for vertical lift and then smoothly transition to horizontal thrust for forward flight. That's one of the many hurdles the Yakovlev engineers had to overcome. The Yakovlev Bureau opted for a unique trijet configuration. The aircraft had a single main engine for horizontal thrust and two smaller lift engines located behind the cockpit. This configuration presented its own set of challenges. Managing the airflow between these engines, especially during transitions between vertical and horizontal flight, was a complex engineering feat. The engineers had to account for factors like ground effect, hot gas ingestion, and the aerodynamic interference between the different engine exhausts. Weight was another crucial factor. VTOL aircraft need powerful engines and robust structures, which adds weight. The engineers had to carefully balance performance requirements with weight considerations to ensure the aircraft could achieve its intended performance goals. Section 5. Engineering Innovation, Thrust Vectoring, and Lift Engines The Yak-141 wasn't just about brute force, it was about clever engineering. One of its most remarkable features was the thrust vectoring nozzle on the main engine. This meant the jet's exhaust could be directed, allowing for incredible maneuverability during vertical landings and takeoffs. The lift engines were equally ingenious. These powerful engines, positioned behind the cockpit, provided the necessary thrust for vertical lift. They were designed to be compact and lightweight, minimizing their impact on the aircraft's overall size and performance. These innovations, however, came at a cost. Developing these advanced technologies required significant resources and time. The project faced delays and budgetary constraints, 
which were exacerbated by the political and economic turmoil engulfing the Soviet Union in the late 1980s and early 1990s. Despite the challenges, the Yakovlev engineers persevered. They conducted countless hours of testing, both on the ground and in the air, to refine the aircraft's systems and ensure its safety and performance. Section 6. The Collapse of an Empire As the Yak-141 inched closer to becoming a reality, the Soviet Union began to crumble. The once mighty superpower faced economic hardship, and funding for ambitious military projects like the Yak-141 dried up. The collapse of the Soviet Union had a devastating impact on the Yak-141 program. The once seemingly limitless resources of the Soviet military evaporated overnight. The Yakovlev Bureau, now facing an uncertain future in a newly independent Russia, struggled to secure funding to keep the project alive. Despite the setbacks, the Yak-141 did make its mark. It achieved supersonic flight during testing, a feat no other VTL jet had accomplished before. It proved that a supersonic VTL fighter was not just a dream, but a tangible possibility. The Yak-141's legacy, however, would extend far beyond its achievements in the skies above the Soviet Union. It would go on to influence one of the most advanced fighter jets ever built, the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II. Section 7. The Legacy and What Could Have Been, The F-35 Connection In a twist of fate, the Yak-141 story became intertwined with that of the American F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. With the Soviet Union gone, Yakovlev, seeking to keep the project afloat, partnered with Lockheed Martin. This collaboration proved to be a pivotal moment in the F-35's development. Lockheed Martin engineers gained valuable insights from the Yak-141's design, particularly in the areas of thrust vectoring and lift system integration. The Yak-141's legacy lives on in the F-35B, the short takeoff and vertical landing variant of the Joint Strike Fighter. The F-35B's design clearly reflects the influence of the Yak-141, particularly in its use of a lift fan and a thrust vectoring nozzle. The Yak-141 serves as a reminder of the ingenuity of Soviet engineers and the often unpredictable path of technological innovation. It is a story of ambition, setbacks, and the enduring pursuit of pushing the boundaries of what's possible in aerospace engineering.